the satanic scholar, proudly preserving the Miltonic romantic legacy of Lucifer. One simply cannot overstress the significance of Milton's Satan to the tradition of Romantic Satanism. There simply wouldn't have been a movement of Romantic Satanism without Milton's Satan, which is actually the great irony of Paradise Lost. The Puritan poet Milton wrote Paradise Lost as a grand Christian epic intended to justify the ways of God to men, as he writes. Inadvertently, in his peerless portrait of the fallen archangel, Milton created the most sympathetic and sublime Satan ever to be. Literary critics of Milton's Paradise Lost have, generally speaking, been divided into camps of quote-unquote Satanists and anti-Satanists, locked in an ongoing argument over whether Milton's Satan is a heroic liberator or a foolish fiend. The debate over Satan's claim to hero status started as early as the 17th century. Milton's Satan was deemed the hero of Paradise Lost on the grounds of classical formality, which is to say Satan is the active character of the story, he moves the story along, and he's triumphant uh, over Adam, that is, and this was seen to be to the poem's detriment. In the 18th century, Milton's Satan got caught up in arguments over the sublime, and he became an exemplar of sublimity. Um, his flaws and his doom largely eclipsed by his abundant majesty and grandeur. By the turn of the 19th century, Milton's Satan was ultimately seen as a hero on moral grounds, as a noble challenger of coercive power. And whereas Milton Satan had previously been deemed sublime in spite of his sinful rebellion or crime, during Romanticism, impassioned praise was heaped upon Milton Satan because of his rebellion against God, which was now reevaluated as virtuous and just. I don't believe that this was either a misguided assessment or a mischievous misinterpretation, as anti-Satanist critics say. I believe Milton Satan really lends himself to the romantic reading of the poem, as Milton went well out of his way to heroicize his Satan. There's been a great deal of speculation over why this was. William Blake had famously theorized in The Marriage of Heaven and Hell that the reason Milton wrote in fetters when he wrote of angels and God and at liberty when of devils and hell is because he was a true poet and of the devil's party without knowing it. According to Blake, there is an obvious tension in the text between Milton the religionist and Milton the artist or poet, which accounts for the remarkably rich and remarkably bland portraits of Milton's Satan and Milton's God, respectively. In the Blakeian reading of Paradise Lost, despite Milton's asserted aim of a thoroughly reasoned theodicy, the grandeur of the poetry inspired by Satan and his infernal surroundings um, betrays Milton's inclination to the religion of art over Christianity. Milton Satan is an artistic triumph, and this masterpiece of a poetic character quite simply overpowered the poet who created him. The crux of the legend of Lucifer is the aspiring angel's ambition to break free from the will of God, his prideful desire to become his own author, his own God, what Coleridge called rebellious self-idolatry. And this impossible struggle of Satan's is presented with unparalleled magnificence in Paradise Lost. His pride had cast him out from heaven with all his host of rebel angels, by whose aid aspiring to set himself in glory above his peers, he trusted to have equaled the Most High if he opposed, and with ambitious aim against the throne and monarchy of God, raised in pious war in heaven, and battle proud with vain attempt. Of course, in the poem, 
Milton Satan could not break away from the creator god writing his fate, but the character of Satan did break away from the creator poet writing his lines. Milton essentially lost control of his Frankenstein monster, and Milton Satan found his following in the Romantics. As the devil, he owes everything to Milton. Dante and Tasso present us with a very gross idea of him. Milton divested him of a sting, hooves and horns, clothed him with the sublime grandeur of a graceful but tremendous spirit, and restored him to the society. The simplest way to see the extent to which Milton's hell-doomed anti-hero was admired during the Romantic era is to take a look at the romantic renditions of Milton Satan in the visual arts. Traditionally, just as Lucifer had lost his luminous name as he was exiled from heaven, so too had he lost his brilliance and beauty, the angelic prince's face and form marred as he was cast down into hell, and this traditional Christian iconography was a way of humbling the prince of pride. In contrast to this, Milton Satan, in artistic romantic treatments, even in damnation, remains remarkably alluring. He's classically beautiful, athletic, heroically passionate, and prideful, resplendently regal, and resolute. Often, even the fallen angel's wings remain angelic. Or Satan is portrayed as wingless in idealized human form. Interestingly, romantic visualizations of Milton's Satan are the closest artists have ever come to bringing to life the majestic, ruined archangel Milton scribes in Paradise Lost's most vivid poetry. He, above the rest, in shape and gesture proudly eminent, stood like a tower. His form had yet not lost all her original brightness, nor appeared less than archangel ruined, and the excess of glory obscured, darkened so, yet shone above them all the archangel. But his face deep scars of thunder had entrenched, and care sat on his faded cheek. But under brows of dauntless courage, and considerate pride, waiting revenge. Shelley didn't say the devil owes everything to us, that is, the romantics, but rather that he owes everything to Milton. And indeed, Milton's Satan is portrayed with remarkable accuracy in the idealized romantic renderings, which discarded the horned and hoofed Satan in exchange for a humanized and heroized Lucifer, a paragon of classical beauty befitting the dazzling rebel who holds pride of place in Paradise Lost. I believe the romantic reading of Milton Satan is just as valid as the visuals. He certainly excites compassion for Satan and endeavours to make him out an injured personage. He gives him human passions too, makes him pity Adam and Eve and justify himself much as Prometheus does. Yet Milton was never blamed for all this. I should be very curious to know what his real belief was. Nothing can exceed the energy and magnificence of the character of Satan as expressed in Paradise Lost. It is a mistake to suppose that he could ever have been intended for the popular personification of evil. Milton has so far violated the popular creed, if this shall be judged to be a violation, as to have alleged no superiority of moral virtue to his god over his devil. And this bold neglect of a direct moral purpose is the most decisive proof of the supremacy of Milton's genius.